Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to be showing you how I tune my Ludwig Black Beauty. This is a 14 by 6.5, and, and with this kind of drum, what you really want to go for is cranking your resonant head and then making your batter head be a little bit more on the medium side of tuning. So I'm going to walk you through this entire process, but to get started, let's do the bottom head first, and then we'll work our way to the batter head. And then at the very end of the video, I'll show you the result. And hopefully this is something you'll want to use in future recordings or if you're playing live. So to get started, let's put this on the resonant side. And then just a simple trick that you can do is just put a drumstick underneath the snare wires like this. And then where I typically like to tune my resonant head to be at is 400 hertz. Now, for some of you, that might be really high, but what I've found that works best for the tuning and music that I play, it's way better if you crank your resonant head up and then you can actually do more with your batter head. So that's my goal whenever I'm trying to teach anyone is crank your resonant head. That's the secret sauce. So I've got a TuneBot here. Uh, this is a TuneBot Studio. I use this wherever I go. Now, some of you out there that don't have this, you don't need this to get this type of tuning that I'm going to be showing you today. You can use your ear. And I highly recommend it uh, to always be partnered if you're using a tool like this because this isn't the end-all be-all when it comes to tuning. I know so many people out there don't like to use tuners. They prefer to use their ears. I do both. So let's get into it. I'm going to get a baseline of 400 hertz for this uh, resonant head. And we're going to figure out, you know, the quickest way to get there. So I'm going to just see what reference I have here. So right now I'm at 353. And what I'll do from this point is I will do a full turn on every single lug. And I'll be doing this in a star pattern, just going like this and then we'll see what the results will be from there. So I'll start here at the one closest to me. I'll go directly across. I'll do the same with this one. And I'll move over here. Now let's go here. One more. All right, now let's turn the turn back, back on. Let's see where we're at. So we're at 396, so I'll do very small increments and just get these other lugs right up. And then we'll be at our goal. And there we go, we're at 400 hertz, and that's exactly how I would approach tuning the resonant head for this type of a snare tuning. Now, let's talk about heads. The bottom head that I use is a Remo Ambassador Hazy. This snare head is by far my absolute favorite to use. I know a lot of people like Evans, I prefer Remo. If Evans is available, of course I'll use it, but for what I'm using on my snare drums that I typically use when I'm recording, or playing live, I'll use a Remo. This is a Remo Ambassador Clear snare side head. Uh, the durability of these typically will last you uh, three to six months, depending on how hard of a hitter you are. Now I know that might sound crazy to some people because you're probably going, Ryan, I had never hit my resonant head, why would I need to replace it? But like I mentioned earlier, this is the secret sauce to getting a really nice tuned snare drum. and making sure you have a really fresh resonant head makes a giant difference. So make sure you got a really solid head on your resonant head um, to really control that tone. So just for those of you that aren't using a tune bot, this is what it sounds like. That's where you're going to be going, which is really, really tight. Um, and now let's work our way to the batter head and we'll go over the settings that I recommend for tuning the batter head. All right, so before we dive into the actual setting that I'm using, I'm going to go over the batter head um, head of choice that I use, which is also a Remo, and it's a Power Stroke 4 coated. This head has so much thud and a lot of attack. 
a lot of warmth as well, and it's more of a controlled tone. So if you don't like using dampening, you might not need to use this, and it sounds just fine by itself. And when I do the results, I'll A and B the uh, dampening process. I just use a moon gel with this particular drum. Sometimes I use an O-ring, but I'll just show you it without dampening and with dampening. So um, let's see where we're at with this real quick. I'll grab my TuneBot again. So this is extremely low, and if your batter head is this low, chances are your drum might not sound the best, and it's reading right now 144. That is way too low in my opinion, unless you're going for a really vintage sound and you maybe have a towel over it or something, which is understandable, but that's not what we're going for. We're going for a nice medium, uh, almost high tuning range on the batter, so what we're going to go for is a 260 hertz to 265 hertz range. So uh, I will do a full turn on each lug really quick. And then when I'm done with this, I'll see where I'm at on the frequency. So now I'm at 228. And for those of you that like to tune a little bit lower, this might be your sweet spot. It all depends. Tuning is entirely up to you. Um, this is just what I found to be really good. If you want to tune it a little bit lower, but we still want to aim a little bit higher. So let me just see how the individual lugs are sounding now that it's a little bit higher and we can hear the pitches more clearly. So these two are clearly lower, so I'm going to raise them. Still kind of the same thing. We're getting really close now, which is awesome. They're a lot more in, in tune with each other now, which I recommend the higher you start tuning, the more clearly you're gonna hear those individual pitches. So let's see where we're at now. So we're at 254, so we're almost there. So let's just give it a little bit more tuning. Almost there. So now we're at 260 and it's sounding pretty good with each other. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this over to the snare stand over here on my left and then we'll hear how it sounds and then I'll also put a moon gel on it just to see the overall results. All right, so before I hit it with the snare wires on, I'm gonna do it off, just so you can hear the overall tone without the wires on. So it's a very distinct note, has plenty of attack, which I absolutely love. Now let's add the snare wires on. So now let's talk about snare tension and why the wires play such a crucial part in your tuning. Right now I've got them kind of on the looser side. Let's hear what happens when I just tighten them up slightly and see how and hear how the tone changes. So it kind of tightens it up slightly, um, which for some of you may like that, for some of you don't. It's all up to you, like I said before, it's all your, your own preference, you know, season it to taste. Now let's add a moon gel. Let's see what it sounds like.
that's a pretty dry sound. Some of you um, that really like a dry tone, one moon gel for this specific batter head, if you're using a Power Stroke 4, it'll be totally fine. Let's loosen the wires a little bit to see that sound. That's definitely more of the area that I like to keep mine in. I know that's extremely loose, but it still allows the drum to sing pretty well, even with you dampening it. And that's how I tune my snare drum. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more YouTube videos like this. And thanks for stopping by.